Good evening. Welcome to the Yorktown Central School District Board of Education meeting for August 22nd, 2016. Can I have a motion to go into executive sessions with matters pertaining to the uh, personnel, uh, history of the personnel and contractual negotiations? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Can I have a motion to go back into public session? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Yorktown Central School District Board of Education meeting for August 22nd, 2016. May we please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a moment of silence for armed forces, those in our community who have lost loved ones, especially uh, the father of Eric Bishop, the father of Mike Sika, and the mother of Carol Fiore. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everybody, for being patient with us. We are sorry we took a little bit longer. Um, we're going to start with public comment. Is there anybody wishing to speak on agenda-related items only? No? Okay. Uh, we're going to move right on to our superintendent's report. Ralph? Yep. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for being here and for being patient with us. Uh, there's two parts to the superintendent's report this evening. Uh, the first part is we're going to give the uh, last progress report on the 2015-2016 uh, superintendent's action plan. And then we're going to um, discuss with the board the 2016-17 action plan, which is based on their board goals. So I think we're going to start with the 15-16 uh, update. And we're, um, as, let me just begin by saying, as most people in the community know, generally there are five broad board goals. And I say generally because we've added a board goal this year for 16-17, so it will be six moving forward. And the five goals are, one is on curriculum, instruction, and assessment. Uh, the second one is on finance. The third one is communication. The fourth one is technology. And the fifth one is facilities. We look at those goals and what we establish over the course of a year is an action plan um, that goes out to all of our employees. And uh, everybody is aware that this is what we are going to implement over the course of a year. On occasion, and you'll see that, sometimes goals will carry over for more than one year, and clearly that will happen as you see 15, 16, 16, 17, simply because they're still ongoing and they're something that we don't want to let go of, or we haven't completed it, and others are completed. So uh, we'll start with the education goal, and um, Lisa and Mike are actually going to present that. So I don't know, Mike, if you want to come up and join us here, I think we decided to do it from mm -hmm. the podium rather, no, I'm sorry, from the dais rather than the podium. I dated myself. Is dais still a word? Yes. Oh, good. <laughs> So uh, when we look at the first board goal for the education program, the goal is to continually improve the caliber, content, and assessment of instruction through the regular renewal of curriculum and pedagogy to ensure increased rigor through an articulated and relevant K-12 curriculum. The instructional program will reflect the new proficiency standards for the purpose of raising student achievement. So during the 14, the, sorry, during the 15-16 school year, we had um, many bullets in which we were going to work towards to address that goal. The first was to analyze and develop STEAM opportunities for student learning in our K-12 curriculum. Uh, there were K-12 STEAM integration focuses resulting in multidisciplinary and multisensory learning projects. We had many uh, project-based learning activities that were presented to the board throughout the year. Long Walk to Water, uh, the Marshmallow Challenge, and the Shark Tank, those two were from the middle school. Bees and Birds was from Crom Pond. We also had STEAM workshop opportunities for students in the Crom Pond that were the result of some collaboration between the PTA. To continue to integrate the new learning standards and the modules into our YCSD curriculum instruction and assessment, we had many activities that worked towards that as well. We had continued implementation of the K-5 sequenced uh, Engage New York modules in ELA and mathematics. That's the work of, uh, that our K-5 teachers do with our curriculum coaches. Uh, for ELA, it's Pam Chesser, and for mathematics, it's, it's Mary uh, Froats. 
We had curriculum updates through in 9 through 12, regents preparation in Algebra 2 and Trigonometry, and also curriculum updates 9, 12, and English. In terms of the math, the Algebra 2 and Trigonometry, as the math teachers were analyzing the curriculum expectations moving forward, they realized that there was a strong focus on statistics. And in order to help our teachers prepare for teaching statistics at this higher expectation level, uh, one of our teachers, Mr. Labor, who has a, a expertise in that area, really provided uh, professional development for the remainder of our teachers. We have done continued integration of six through six through eight using supplemental resources connected math for mathematics to ensure vertical and horizontal alignment that's an online program that can be used to uh, track student progress uh, either to enrich their learning or to provide remediation if necessary we infused enl and intervention strategies to scaffold, scaffold instruction to help our struggling learners more fully grasp the common core standards we had uh, social studies and uh, teachers at both the middle school and high school work together on vertical alignment of the curriculum to identify the key themes that need to be in place in middle school in order to get the students where we need them to be for the global regions and the US history regions. To further evaluate the ongoing use of tech instructional technology by our students, we continue to increase student devices. Last year, all of our sixth through ninth grade students had Chromebooks 24-7 uh, that they were responsible for and was integrated in their instruction. We continued training for staff to make sure that the staff was comfortable with how to utilize these devices for things such as a Chrome, uh, Google Classroom. We ensured students utilizing accounts and technology properly for instructional purposes by monitoring GoGuardian effectively. Our, in, our uh, Bring Your Own Technology grew district-wide and we also had a Lyric Technology cohorts, administrative cohort, uh, teaching cohort where we worked to um, enhance our, our technology applications in these classrooms. To evaluate student growth, K-8 in ELA and mathematics as measured by the STAR assessments, we had ongoing training for our, our teachers. We had a full three administration periods for the STAR assessment last year at K-8, and we really had uh, such great information for our staff to utilize in forming their instruction. So we spent some time reviewing uh, how to really make sense of all of that information. And at the high school level, we were preparing students for the English, the new English Regents exam, and we were focused on 9-12, the English skills curriculum, to be sure that we could map out what skills are necessary at each, at 9th, 10th, and 11th grade in order to uh, prepare the students for the Regents. To develop the professional development plans for professional certifi certification holders and CTAs level three, we had staff education on the requirements for PD hours to maintain their New York State certification throughout the year. We had an additional document was created on my learning plan to enable easy reporting of PD hours. Online training course offerings were increased and available through the district catalog for staff to uh, take, take advantage of. Information sessions were held for all certification holders on the new regulations and the CTLE requirements and ensured all staff could access their teach accounts. To continue the review of the world language curriculum and we did that with the ongoing work of the content specialist Greg Duncan who really worked to prioritize what are the proficiency standards we need to see in our world language curriculum middle school and high school. To develop the annual professional performance review APPR for teachers and principals as per the 2015 changes we had uh, led by Dr. O'Connor we had APPR committee meetings to comply with the transition to the new requirements under 3012D. We now have a district approved 3012D plan for APPR in place and ready to begin to initiate with the new school year. Mr. Rosen can speak to uh, some of the accomplishments under the Pupil Personnel Services Department. Okay. Good evening, everybody. Um, the first piece was to develop the development of a three year action plan. Um, what we utilized was the uh, New York State Blueprint um, for improved results. We're looking at the strengths the weaknesses, the opportunities, and the barriers of our programs. Some of the areas we're really looking at uh, student advocacy at meetings, being able to speak and understand the CSE process and advocate for the services that we're, they're receiving. Um, looking at parent involvement. Um, we've had student involvement at the high school. Now the next step really is to get them to be able to participate and really speak to the types of services they believe that they need um, and what they want to do going forward. Um, for the parents, we really we've had surveys where they don't parents don't feel that they're 
truly a member of the CSE meeting, so we're really looking at ways to really inform them of the CSE process. We've been working with the SEPTA in the district, had a couple of meetings, one at the end of the school year and one over the summer um, with the president of the SEPTA to really start having building specific meetings. So we really can target at the K3, four, five, middle school and high school, the areas that they need to know as far as navigating the services and supports in all of those buildings. Um, it also looks at the multi-tiered level of support. We have a wonderful RTI system for academics. We're also looking at the behavior piece. We've had a number of students who have needed um, different placements this year and we want to be able to support them through um, you know, social emotional supports in the district so that we can provide programs in house just like we did for some of our students with um, more significant disabilities. Um, we also revised the district special education plan. Really that was a piece to update all of the practices and um, procedures in the department. It gave a description of the special education services um, that we provide to students, um, really listed the uh, estimated budget um, to support the special education programs and services in the school district, and um, an identification of the numbers of students that we have at different levels, which we try to be up to date on, especially for those incoming pre preschool to kindergartners, so we're aware of what services and programs they need <coughs> as they enter into the school district. Um, the next one. Um, to evaluate the roles and responsibilities of the support staff. Um, we really looked at um, this kind of the, uh, the uh, state definitions of all the different roles of the CTAs and the TAs in the districts to so make sure that they're all aligned. Mm -hmm. And I believe at this point everything is in place and um, formalized. Um, implementing and evaluating programs, this is ongoing throughout the year. Um, over the course of the 15-16 school year, we were looking at um, two particular areas, the high school, the life skills class for grades 9 and 10, um, and an ABA classroom applied behavioral analysis for our students with autism who had aged out of um, Mohansic, um, aged out of Brookside to move to Crom Pond. Um, so moving into 16-17, um, we have a more age-appropriate grouping at the high school. The, um, we had too big of an age span. We had to make sure that we kept the students who were um, younger together, and then the students who are 16 to 21, they can be in a classroom at, for this um, together. Um, for grades four and five, we've had a class at Brookside for the last three years, and those older students were transitioning to uh, Crom Pond, and it worked out well this year. We were able to have a lead replacement who came into the district and is continuing next year. She knew the, knows the students, and it's going to be a wonderful transition to Crom Ponds. Um, we also, one of the pieces on here is to, we did spend the year exploring a possible new three-to-one delivery model for related services. Um, we're really looking at speaking through the different SEPTA organizations in each building um, and what that would mean. And what we're really looking at is it's basically three weeks and one week, that three weeks out of a month, students would get their services, typically how they've been receiving them, being pulled out of the classroom with a speech therapist, occupational therapist. But our goal is really to try and get the providers into the classrooms as much as possible. So one week out of every month, they would be pushing in. Um, we have uh, did some research with some other districts that are doing it, and the feedback that we received is the students really like it because now the, t the um, speech therapists are coming in hearing what's going on in the classroom and they can help translate that back into their therapy sessions and then the students can then bring that back to the classroom. So it's been seen with some success in other places and we're looking to um, really spend the year talking to parents to implement that for the 17-18 school year. Um, the last piece, the provide training um, on state regulations, that's always ongoing in the department. Um, we utilize um, the uh, administrators in PPS. We also utilize um, Gary Silvera from Show and Pearlson to really come in, talk to us about the going um, trends out there in IEP development, regulations, procedures to make sure that everything um, we're doing is A, meeting the needs of the students, and B, in compliance with all the regulations that we need to do to follow. I think that's all the pieces. That's okay. Okay. And then under character education, uh, we do have ongoing, as the board is well aware, we have PBIS programs in every one of our buildings. 
Uh, there are ac acronyms used in each of the elementary schools to further teach the students the expected behavior. Um, we celebrate acts of kindness, service, and positive role modeling with our students. We recognize students who make a difference in their classroom, schools, and communities. Uh, to seek, to continue to seek service opportunities for our students in their in their school community and the community at large. This is ongoing and continuous. Service includes responding to our troops, the midnight run, senior citizen prom and shows, uh, fundraisers for good causes such as the Mitten Donation Program. And one of the other bullets that we were working towards address character education was to investigate uh, district-wide character education recognition. We were named a New York State School District of Character and also, and more importantly, we were named a National School District of Character, one of only four in the United States. So those were wonderful recognitions that we've received over the course of the past school year. Okay. And then Mr. Cole can speak to financial planning. Thank you. Um, the overarching fiscal planning goal was to continue to develop a fiscally responsible budget that balances the obligation to provide the best possible education to the children of the Yorktown Central School District with the obligation to be fiscally responsible to the district's taxpayers. With regard to budget oversight, uh, we provided year-end estimates to the board on a monthly basis towards the end of the school year, we met in January with the Financial Advisory Committee, and estimated surpluses and talked about reserve fund establishment. Uh, we were pleased that um, we were able to use those fund estimates to craft a 16-17 budget. Uh, we monitored and adjusted staffing based on the capacity planning and relationship to enrollment. Uh, all newly opened positions continued to be reviewed for necessity, possible repurposing. Uh, the budget creation was based on the trends we'd seen in current years. Uh, we reviewed with the town when possible new communities that are uh, expected to be built within our community. And we have our eye on one large one in particular that we've talked to the board about. Uh, we developed hiring goals to ensure fair and equitable salary placement based on education and experience, and we've made a practice of including contingent positions within each operating budget, again in 1617, to do with any enrollment changes or fluctuations. Uh, we reviewed all and updated all job descriptions to include ADA requirements. That particular goal is continually ongoing. We did enlist the help of a consultant to review some job functions to facilitate uh, placement of certain positions within uh, repurposing within the school district, and that has been completed. Um, we continually assess the effectiveness of our security protocol. You may remember that Michael Dorn visited our district in March of 2016 and uh, reviewed the practices and, and procedures we put in place from his previous visit. Uh, the impact of the 16-17 changes that were articulated in the Albany's budget passed in April continue to be assessed and we're reacting to those now uh, to make changes as necessary. Um, we support the analysis and fiscal impact of the smart bond funding. 50% of that money has been received, roughly $700,000. Uh, the allocations have been identified and the initial phase of implementation plan was reviewed uh, by the Board of Education. A public hearing was held uh, and that is ongoing. Uh, in cooperation with the Fiscal Advisory Committee, we've identified uh, our financial exposure uh, in the near future and we continue to talk about the establishment of reserve funds. Again, we meet with the Financial Advisory Committee thrice a year. Uh, last time was in January. Uh, talked about cash reserves, available fund options, and the 16-17 budget is reflective of those meetings. Uh, as a matter of fact, it was critical, those meetings were critical to being able to go out with a 0% increase in the Yorktown municipality for 16-17. Uh, our report on the effectiveness of green transportation couldn't be rosier. Um, we reported to the board on February 22nd. The new vehicles we've employed, we have three of them, two fully electric, one hybrid, and they're working beyond our expectations. We're really happy with the results of them. Um, we began uh, the 16-17 uh, uh, school budget process this October, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, in uh, October of 2015, we disseminated the budget. All the milestones were achieved, budget presentations, and the tax cap calculation met their, uh, their deadlines and the budget was passed in May 2016, again with a 0% increase in the town of Yorktown. Um, we continue to ensure that all our resources are fully maximized in all the ancillary programs. We communicate um, all the available funds to cabinet members continually. Financial Advisory Committee is updated on programmatic needs uh, and allocation of available resources. That was done again this year with an, an investment in our libraries in particular uh, towards the end of the school year. 
Um, the business, the uh, Board of Education was kind enough to approve the uh, stru restructuring of the business office that we proposed. Uh, the first phase of that plan has been implemented. The rest of that plan will be implemented by the end of the fall of the current year. Um, we concluded all the outstanding bargaining unit contracts, negotiations for teachers, nurses, CTAs, clerical custodians, and the Yorktown uh, supervisors and principals. Now we continue to review the progress made on the school lunch program. We're showing significant improvement monetarily. We made some changes in the menu, and we're seeing some, uh, with these modest changes, we're seeing significant improvements, and we're going to continue those in the 16-17 school year. Um, to fully maximize the annex spaces that were previously used by the alternative high school, we have completed the relocation of the uh, pupil personnel department, transportation department, and um, the repurposing of the uh, central office areas that were vacated by those departments into conference rooms and additional offices. And that's it for financial planning. Thank you, John. Uh, the next board goal refers to communication and it's to promote collaboration among parents, school, and community through proactive, ongoing, and open communication by aligning messages for key initiatives and programs and engaging the stakeholders in a two-way communication. This year, we placed a lot of emphasis on uh, communicating with our stakeholders. We added a new section on the district website. We updated our Facebook page, and it uh, was obvious to us that many people were uh, going to that site. We've added Twitter accounts, including one for me, and I'm um, actively tweeting. Would you agree? This is Rent. Absolutely. Uh, we produced three email newsletters called Fine Points, developed web pages to feature our character education uh, programs in the individual school buildings. We launched a new website, which is uh, more user friendly. Radio utilization of social media platform, including Twitter, Facebook, and linked to student performance videos. Uh, we've released press releases and photos to our local newspapers uh, and to the television media. We've partnered with many online media services, Daily Voice, Community Advisor, and Patch Star. We've managed video productions and print photography of our concerts, plays, and other activities through cooperation with in-house staff and some paid consultants. Uh, district initiatives, awards, and accomplishments were communicated to the school and to the Thank town you. community. The smart school bond funding was explained to the community uh, as well as the property tax freeze credit for homeowners. We created and distributed a budget newsletter to the YCSD property owners. Back to school information, new student registration, health forms, updated YCSD calendar continue to be available with great emphasis on green formats and economical print resources. Information on the Board of Education meetings remains on the website, reminding viewers of online videos of meetings, which are annotated for easy referral, and cable television showings as well. Cable television channels regularly feature, feature showings of student performances, and if the voice worked, as yes. it would really be great. Um, but that problem is not, uh, it's not coming from us. Are we fixing it? I hope so. Uh, technology, um, Patrice Hattie George is on vacation, so I'm going to um, sub for her. Uh, the board goal, forgive me, let me read the board goal, is to continue to implement infrastructure advancements that support instruction to maximize teaching and learning and to continue to develop efficiencies and respond to nice uh, mandates. First, uh, subcategory was to maintain a safe, secure, stable technology platform while continuing to build a rich digital and increasingly mobile learning environment. We upgraded the firewalls and installed an intrusion detection system. Uh, our network cannot be infiltrated, we hope. Uh, implemented the GoGuardian application for the 24-7 uh, one-to-one Chromebook users in the 7th and 8th and 9th grade. Um, we track student use of their, um, the, the Go Guardian system actually helps us to track student use of the uh, Chromebook when they're home. And we also have the ability to lock down or lock the device if it's lost. We completed new cable runs to every high school classroom and added 37 wireless access points. But there's more Wi-Fi service in the high school. Continues to support the use of Google, Google Apps, including Google Classroom 
and we um, also had Lyric Model Schools cohort model for training of our faculty and administrators. Provided daily support to the 4,000 plus users, utilizing a combination of district and personal devices. In conjunction with the deputy superintendent, supported the partnership with Lyrics Model Schools to provide professional development in the use of digital tools. There were 32 sessions that were scheduled, and this replaced, you remember, in the old days for about five years, we had Tech Tuesdays when the teachers were really learning to implement and use a lot more technology in the classroom. Now that they've become so advanced with that, we went on to another level, and that's the um, actually the model schools. Uh, we continue to develop a cont uh, continuity of operation plans. We implemented an automated cloud-based backup solution. Um, so we have backup to our network with an external system 24-7. In conjunction with the deputy superintendent, we continue to facilitate the administration of K-8 online assessments. As Lisa stated, uh, we supported three administrations of the Star Renaissance assessment to our K-8 students. This gives the teachers the opportunity to see how the students are progressing in ELA and in math. We manage the Smart uh, Schools Investment Plan SSIP process to complete a district-wide network refer refresh and wireless upgrade. We submitted and appro received approval for our technology plan. We completed the initial SSIP. We received 700,000 uh, for the associated letter of intent and we received approval from NYSED for the plan. Well, if there's more information that's required of the community or the board on that, it's uh, really listed all on the district webpage. And I think that brings us to facilities. Facilities, good evening. Um, the facilities goal was to continue to implement a systematic process to ensure continuous improvement and proactive maintenance of the district's buildings, grounds, and capital assets in an expeditious and fiscally responsible manner. The first bullet point was to oversee the current capital bond projects. Um, after 10 long years, we finally reached the end of our capital bond projects with this summer's work. Excuse me, this summer's work. Um, the next slide shows the projects that were addressed this past summer. Inclusive are the high school, middle school, new can, uh, campus signage, middle school front canopy modifications, Middle school crump on new kitchen ceilings and lights, crump on nurse's office alterations, crump on computer lab renovations and clinical suite, Brookside heating system burner controls replacement, and central office the uh, ventilation of the utility tunnel. Uh, the second bullet point was to continue district-wide infrastructure improvement projects via the five-year plan that was completed by our district architects KSQ and submitted to SED in June of 2016. Um, we also included some 2016-17 operational projects. Inclusive were the Brookside parking lot expansion, interior door hardware and keying at Mohansic, ceiling and lights district-wide, and site lighting improvements to the high school, middle school campus. These have yet to be designed. Um, that will happen in this next school year. Um, additionally, we identified capital projects to be included in future operating budgets. The third bullet point was to continue district-wide initiative to reduce reliance on natural resources and explore use of solar panels. Uh, recall in December, we had um, received a proposal from Solar City uh, to put um, ground-mounted solar panels on the property of BOCES. We rejected that. Um, we are we are soliciting proposals to have roof-mounted solar panels at our French Hill building. So we're still efforting that. And the last bullet point to continue facilities maintenance and upkeep of the French Hill building to maximize occupancy. So we want to see this building continue to be profitable. the update. How do you like that photograph? Very nice. <laughs> Thank you. It's the whole family. That was old 105. <laughs> 105 in the annex. It's, the wedding it's Sunday <laughs> dinner. <laughs> do you want us to ask questions about this one before we move on? Sure. Okay. Uh, first of all, thank you all very much. 
I don't have this on. All right, thank you all very much. Um, we appreciate all of it. And do we want to start? Cheryl, did you have any questions? I don't have any questions. Tom? Mm -hmm. Rashmi? No questions. Mike? I'm good. Christine? Oh, all right, I just had one question, and that is um, on the fiscal, for the, do we, are we going to try to identify more opportunities for green vehicles within the district as we start to rotate through our um, vehicles? Yes, we are. We're, we're going to look at, um, our next focus is going to be look at uh, uh, vehicles electric vehicles and hybrid vehicles that will remain on individual campuses. So yes, the answer, the small answer is yes. Okay, great, thank you. All right, so we're going to go to part two now, which is the action plan for 2016 and 17, and I know the board has been instrumental in contributing <coughs> to the um, action plan, so I thank you for that. Uh, again, this would be the difference where we go from five golds to six golds because the board agreed that it would be important to have a human resources goal. So we have Sheila here, and she'll speak to that when we get to it. Uh, instead of going, because I know that you've seen it, instead of going through the action plan uh, bullet by bullet, because I think, I think we're <laughs> killing you, and I don't mean to do that. We're usually so much more entertaining than this. But, Children um, are usually here. <laughs> <laughs> but at any rate, so I, I think I just highlighted a few things. So for the education program, and anybody that, that wants to chime in when it's your goal, please feel free to. Uh, the, the thing that I just emphasized there was uh, letter A, continue to analyze, develop, and offer STEAM opportunities for student learning in our K-12 curriculum. Our K-5 teachers will continue to participate as part of the model school program. So again, there'll be, you'll see more board presentations on what our students do when they're having interdisciplinary and multi-sensory instruction. So we actually already are planning an elementary K-5 cohort of teachers to work together with the model schools uh, help on developing the STEAM opportunities and it'll involve teachers, library media specialists as well as one elementary principal. Terrific. And they do a great, Lyric does a great job with that so we, we've been very pleased. I then skip down to letter F. Uh, we will continue to implement the STAR assessments in ELA and math. Uh, but we're going to add the ninth grade, so we'll go K to nine, and then we'll continue to go up. Uh, then I went to G, develop and implement the 3012D annual professional performance review for teachers and principals. So as you heard Lisa say, uh, Florence was really instrumental in moving us from 3012C to 3012D. We did get our approval from SED, and we'll move forward with the new APPR plan starting in the fall. So are we implementing it or developing it? We're, we're, we, developed. we developed it. We're implementing it. Okay, so the development come out. It's just implementing yeah, it, yeah. right? We, we well, we developed it in the summer and finally got approval. So yeah. oh, technically okay. so it was after July. So you're done with one of your goals? We, we, well, we're, <laughs> Half not done of one. With, we're not done <laughs> with the implementing. That, that just begins. But we, okay. we did finish it, and we did get state approval, which was great. Uh, Jay, uh, we're updating the existing RTI plan. You know that we've been very heavily involved in RTI here in academics but now we're going to be introducing the RTI plan for social emotional development which is also so important to our students and behavior it's called RTISEB social emotional behavior did you want to say anything more about it uh, well one of the areas we're going to pursue is we had a committee um, last year over several days over at BOCES be trained in STEPS A which is the acronym for skills training for emotional problem solving for adolescents so we're going to be developing components of that curriculum to our middle school and high school students this year then I went down to Q review and evaluate the academic eligibility policy for all student athletes as you know several years ago we put in an academic eligibility policy uh, to ensure that all of our athletes are keeping up with their schoolwork and if they're not they aren't allowed to participate in the program whatever that particular sport of interest may be. So we're just going to continue to review that. Um, we know that Debbie Brand at the high school is, is very good about following through on that policy. Uh, there's nobody that she always gets her man, or woman. <laughs> so uh, this is an important piece and we do want to review it. Review alignment of K-12 physical education curriculum. We want to make sure, the, the teachers really in PE have done a wonderful job to support the uh, core curriculum uh, in their PE classes uh, because they do feel a sense of responsibility uh, to their colleagues on the grade level to ensure that ELA is being, um, you know, 
utilized or uh, taught in, er in every subject area. Uh, so we'll continue that. They're supporting the standards K-12. to And we're going to review and update the parent and coaching handbooks to ensure that there's evidence that support the understanding of PBIS. Uh, in pupil personnel services, I uh, focused on A, foster student engagement and self-advocacy and involvement in determining their own educational goals and plans. I think this is really cool and I'm going to let Lisa speak to it because I like the way you explained it. Okay. Uh, as, as Mr. Rosen explained earlier, it's part of our three-year action plan to enhance student engagement at their CSE meetings. So uh, we do have good student attendance, but we don't have active engagement. So we're looking to develop a student-directed approach to planning for uh, their their uh, academic plan as well as their future starting in the high school so this summer we started a book club we have about nine uh, staff members from the high school including uh, Mr. Rosen and I and we're reading a book that is all about the student directed approach to planning for your future and we're going to be developing over the course of the year ways in which we can do workshops for students and really get them to feel confident enough to speak to what helps me and what doesn't help me uh, it's one thing for them to hear it from a bunch of, of, of professionals, but they're the ones living it day to day and really what helps them and, and what they could benefit from in terms of moving forward with their special education plan. And then I went down to E, provide multi-tiered systems of behavioral and academic support, and that's in conjunction with what we're speaking about now, is that we're not just focusing on the academic, obviously. We've always focused on the, whole, the education of the whole child, but making sure that we're putting uh, things into place where there are situations, um, whether it's behavioral, whether it's emotional, whether it's social, where we're taking a careful look at that and how we may be able to remediate that. Uh, character education, uh, we want to, uh, I went right down to D, um, provide formal instruction to all student athletes, student officers, and student organization members uh, that character infractions will result in loss of privilege privilege to represent the school or attend competitions, events, and school-related activities and trips. And you know that we have done that uh, if there has been a situation where we felt that there was a character infraction. We simply held them back from participating. Uh, and e, there, there's nothing more, maybe that's a good point to stop, there's nothing more important to us than the character of our students. And um, we're, we're certainly concerned that they be smart and articulate and well prepared for 21st century uh, opportunities that await them. And we're certainly concerned about their social and emotional development and, and certainly we want them to be healthy and, and we spend a lot of time and interest in providing uh, a course of program instruction for leading a healthy lifestyle. But there's probably nothing more important to us than their character because if they're not good people that are willing to do good things in their community and for the society, then we failed. So uh, we, we, we put that really, although we list it as the third part of our curriculum instruction assessment goal, it really, it's probably number one in our own minds in the way we treat it. And then we want to provide assistance to neighboring districts who are planning to expand their character ed program. As Lisa mentioned, as the board knows, uh, we received the national recognition for a school district of character and only one of four in the country, which we're very proud of. So at this juncture, if there are other New York State schools that are interested in developing a character education program, we would certainly work with them to do that. Fiscal planning, I took the liberty of, of uh, really identifying three things for Tom. So Tom, if you, if there, if there are actually 11, what, what you're not seeing out in the community is, you'll see it when it's put up on the website, which will be at the beginning of the school year. Uh, there's a lot more to um, each goal, probably in the area of 11 or 12 subcategories, but I'm only highlighting those that I felt would really be important for the board to hear. I know you've seen it earlier in the, in the summer. Um, and these are the ones I highlighted for you, Tom. Number three, develop school building capacity options for potential enrollment impact of new housing developments, grade level realignment, school boundaries, um, uh, whatever it takes for us to meet that. We're not 100, again, uh, the little bit of uncomfortability that I have uh, is we're not exactly sure what's being built where. Uh, but we do have a sense that in a few years from now, and I don't know if I'm pointing in the right direction, there will be a substantial and 
a substantially big enough housing development yeah. to impact our schools. Uh, we're, right now we're un operating under the assumption that it's at least 80 units, I think is the last word we got. So there, there will be some impact. Right. Uh, and based on that impact, we may have to look at the realignment of the schools mm -hmm. because that impact right now would be on one school in particular. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So we'll keep an eye on that. And, and um, Mike Grace, our supervisor, knows we're very interested in that. Uh, so I'm sure that he'll keep us informed. Yeah. And, and he did say that it's probably about three, four years away, if I, if I understood that correctly. Right. right. Okay, and then uh, I also identified seven in the uh, group oversee the investigation of cost information and feasibil feasibility of the establishment of a capital reserve uh, fund to be placed before the voting public, uh, perhaps during the uh, 2016 school year, right. 17 school year. Did, did you want to speak to that? Only at all that, or? that um, uh, th these are discussions that we've had through the Financial Advisory Committee initially. We happen to be in a, in a very good position financially where we believe that we can save substantial amounts of taxpayer money by completing capital projects with money that we have in reserve. Uh, that we have available rather, rather than, than borrowing. rather than borrowing it and right. spending so it, it's it's a topic worthy of discussion and this is one of the vehicles I think that we'll have to discuss as we go forward terrific and then I uh, also selected number 11 close out final construction projects yeah. thank you God related <laughs> to the original 2006 voter authorized bond issue and provide the Board of Education with an assessment of any uh, remaining funds as the community knows back in 2006 the public approved a bond for about $37 million. We received another $3 million in Excel money from the state. That $40 million was to um, take care of some really important facilities needs that were long overdue to take care of. And we actually started the work in 2007. Um, we really, thanks to really Jackie, Jackie Carbone really deserves <laughs> lots of the credit for this, Dennis and Tom. Uh, and also our uh, colleagues from ARIS and um, from KSQ, the architectural firm and the uh, project manager firm. We were able to really use that $40 million more than we thought we would be able to accomplish projects yeah. with. So the six year bond became a 10 year bond and the last of the projects as we speak are being completed and this is going to be one happy man. Uh, I know you've all heard of mortgage burning parties. <laughs> I am going to have a bond burning party that you'll Not never you'll never forget. It won't be on campus because no 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 fire on, no fire on campus. <laughs> but uh, it, it will be a party that's for sure. In human resources, um, the board felt it was very very important that we establish a human resource. Um, goal. So I'm going to read the goal and then I'll tell Sheila what I highlighted for her. And then <laughs> Sheila, maybe the board will have questions for you. Yeah, please come and join us. So the, board, uh, the goal reads, continually provide specialized guidance and advice to build a team of the best and the brightest professionals to contribute to the optimal learning experience for our students. The goal of human resource function is to develop, support, encourage, and enable staff to build capacity. Now, Sheila actually put 11 goals. She's an ambitious, but all, everybody's ambitious, right. competing with everybody else. <laughs> I have about 800 goals, to, but they'll all be done, you can be sure. <laughs> if I have to be here morning, noon, and night, they oh, will right. get done um, and throw in Saturday and Sunday. So she actually put in uh, 11 goals. The three, the three that I highlighted, Sheila, and then the board will probably have some questions for you. In collaboration with the Assistant Superintendent for Curriculum and Instruction, provide professional development that meets the requirements of continuing teacher and leader education, CTLE for professional and CTAL, uh, CTA level three certifications. I think this is gonna need some explanation yes. from you, so hold on to it, because I, I, I'm thinking there people don't really quite understand what that means. Uh, I did seven, I, I also highlighted seven, update and maintain a recruitment plan that reflects the best recruitment and selection practices. And we actually have somebody that's newly hired in the audience. And I can attest that she's been through a very rigorous process. And what did I say? That reflects the best. So here we are, you have one of the best with us <laughs> right. tonight. Uh, and then <coughs> number eight, begin the development of a district level exit interview program. We had started this 
10 years ago when I started as superintendent. And then it kind of fell by the wayside. Um, so to resurrect that would be a very appropriate uh, goal. Um, so we'll, we'll go back and visit that. So just stay where you are, please. In communications, I, um, again, uh, <coughs> I, I took it upon myself to select four for Patrice uh, because she had 13. Uh, I'm Barbara. sorry, for Barbara. Barbara, in Barbara's absence, four out of the 13, one, to reach out to parents and community members where they seek information using multiple plat platforms. I think that's just something we're going to continue to do. Uh, email, online pages, social media postings, Blackboard Connect, all of the principals are expert in using that, and they use it frequently. Uh, parent portal, any newsletters, and of course, Twitter. I would not be who I am today if it wasn't for Twitter. <laughs> Number four, produce at least three email newsletters, find points, culling news from our district schools and offices, an annual budget newsletter. Uh, number five, produce and disseminate an information handbook to be mailed to school families, which aligns with our green initiative. We actually did the first one this year. Uh, we'll do a smaller one next year when we're clear about what really needs to be communicated through mail and what can be communicated only through um, uh, email. And then um, number 13, implement the district app, which will allow easy access to the district web announcements via a person's smartphone. We are capable of doing that. We have an app. And we're going to have an it's app. an app for that. Okay. Isn't that great? <laughs> I am right. excited beyond world comprehension. Okay. Now they can bother me 24-7. You're going to be sorry for that one. 24-7. We've named it for you. The <laughs> the I just thank you so much. Thank you out there, and thank you all. And on behalf of Patrice, um, I, she had identified eight goals, and I actually focused on four: support the rapid growth of a K to 12 mobile learning environment, including our one-to-one -one Chromebook models. This year, we'll have Chromebooks on the fourth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, ninth grade, and tenth grade level. That's pretty amazing. Um, <clears throat> expand the use of uh, district-provided mobile device devices across the grade levels as well as our Bring Your Own Technology, facilitate the infrastructure network, refresh project and wireless upgrade being funded through the district's initial smart school investment plan funding, in conjunction with the assistant superintendent for curriculum and instruction, support the su uh, partnership with Lyric Model Schools to provide professional development and to continue to facilitate ongoing professional development opportunities that support the use of digital tools. And number eight, continue to support the various paperless initiatives that improve communication and reduce costs. Facilities, uh, Dennis had seven goals, I highlighted three. Uh, one is to oversee the closeout reporting of the 2006 capital bond project and as soon as you close that out, I need you to come right over <laughs> right. and continue planning for future capital projects via our facility steering committee with periodic updates to our board of ed in consultation with our district's architect and construction management firms. Three, oversee and facilitate a capital fund committee for purposes of studying the cost impact of providing um, perhaps air conditioning or uh, other things that may be needed in our school buildings. And five, oversee and facilitate a plan for compliance with new state legislation for sampling of municipal drinking water systems in all of our district buildings. And that's what we're going to do next school year. But there's a lot more. I just this, didn't want to. This wanna, school year. This school year. Mm -hmm. I, that, that's right. We're here, right? We're here. We're starting, right, we're starting on September August 29th. That's right. September 1st Next for the Monday. students, August 29th for the new teachers. Monday. So Monday. we're ready. We're ready to go, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now whatever you want to ask, we'll answer. Does anybody have any questions on the action plan? Nope. These guys are great. You want Sheila to explain her? Sheila explain bullet two. Number two. Also, process of the education program. Okay. Well, number two relates to the changes in the law requiring uh, teachers now to have um, additional training. It used to be the PD hours, professional development, 175 in a <coughs> five-year period. With the new changes, it's now called CTLE hours, Continuing Teacher Leader Education. 
with the CTLE hours, it is going to be much more difficult to rack up those 100 hours. Even, you know, even though they reduced it by 75 for teachers, it's going to be more difficult because it has to be approved programs by the state. We have applied to be a, a, a state-sponsored um, provider of training. Our application is in with the state. But the main change for us is where it used to be the teacher's responsibility to report those hours, the providers are going to have to report those hours to the state. So that's where the collaboration with um, the assistant superintendent in HR, where the curriculum will be developing the training, HR will be responsible for making sure that information is uploaded to the state. The state hasn't given a lot of guidance yet. Um, they, that's surprising. They, they <laughs> implemented the program rather quickly, um, didn't give districts much heads up on what was go going to happen. So uh, we aren't approved yet for our training plan. The good news is that they did say that any plan that's approved by January 1st, 2017 will be retroactive to July 1st. So we're very hopeful in the a lot of training in the superintendent's conference days coming up that they'll all count towards these CTLE hours. So you, they have to take specific classes as designed by the state? The state has, has set what their PD uh, they, has They made. set the number of PD hours. The only strict requirement they gave is for English to speakers of other language. If it's a bilingual teacher or a, an EL, ENL teacher, they have to take 50% of the, those hours, so 50 hours in a five-year period in that subject area. Everybody else has to take at least 15 hours in a five-year period. And this applies to all professional um, holders of certification and CTA, CTA level three. Uh, permanent certification holders have to register their certification, but they are not required to complete the 100 hours. And do they have to take it all through our school district, or can they go to other We providers? are responsible for providing the training. It doesn't mean it has to be provided by us. Okay. So if we send someone to a BOCES program, um, that, that counts as us providing it. Gotcha. Is this an area where we could collaborate with other districts? and maybe provide it on a larger scale to maybe minimize some of this? Well, I think that, that's probably the role of BOCES to, okay. a, to right. a certain degree. You know, they, they would really provide a workshop perhaps or a conference that would be beneficial to a large group okay. of teachers mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. it's really they who kind of extend the invitation at a cost to, to the mm -hmm. districts and we would participate that way. Okay. And I've spoken to some other districts. Uh, they haven't received approval yet from the state either for their, um, for their professional development plan or as a sponsor. So it's hard to collaborate when we don't have the approval yet. Yeah. They, they lost two of their very important players. Yes. Um, the assistant commissioner, I guess, resigned. Mm -hmm. And I forgot the other person's title. Uh, I can't believe that I forgot it. Was it was data, data and something with the data so and I, I data mentioned. facilities. Everybody's yeah, so, part of the state. Yeah, so I think you know they're they're having some problems backfilling their people and. Mm -hmm. And then the exit interview. The exit interview that is to to collect some information from staff that are leaving on what worked well, what didn't work well. That will be tied in with, um, and I'm surprised you didn't mention goal one, which is the strategic plan. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. going to guide really all the, uh, the other uh, goals in the HR. Um, for the strategic plan, I'm going to do a, a satisfaction survey to staff and also a swab analysis to determine you know, where we are, what we need to improve. Um, so that will give us some information to help develop a, a survey for the exit interview. Um, I'll be re researching best practices. One of the things that we're looking at is doing it after the person leaves. Um, if you do it while they're still employed, unfortunately you don't get a lot of good information because they're afraid to burn their bridges. Mm -hmm. uh, 
research has shown if you wait a month after they leave, they're settled where they are, they're going to be much more open and honest on what worked, what didn't work. Okay. I like this poll. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Anything else? All right. Thank you, Sheila. So we, we thank you, uh, Board, for uh, a really supporting us in our work in 2015-16. We were able to accomplish what we were able to accomplish thanks to your um, guidance, your support, your help, and uh, your uh, constant vigilance to uh, taking interest in what we do. We're very appreciative of that. And we're very excited about the 2016. I keep looking at all the pages. We're very excited <laughs> about the 16-17 school year and all the goals that we will be undertaking. Ralph um, likes having a list of things to do because then he's going to make sure everybody accomplishes every, everything on that list. Yeah, well, <laughs> how this works now is everybody will get their, um, they'll get a form. It'll be their goal, steps to achieve their goal, timeline, evidence, and then we'll all be in business. So that's how we gather all the information. And this all filters down to all the buildings, too. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, the principals create their action plan based on the board goals and my action plan. So everybody's on the same page. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you very much. All right, what about the education report? So, uh, Lisa. Yeah, in fact, can you? Oh, there we go. Uh, just a very short um, overview of some of the summer program and, cur and curriculum work that's gone on over the months of July and August. Our summer programming for students, we had a K-5 reading and ENL program, which operated for two weeks from July 11th through July 22nd. We had 57 students attend. Our K-12 extended school year program is a six-week program for our eligible special education students, and that ran from July 5th through August 12th. We had 28 students attend. We had a grade six through eight reading support program for special ed students who still in need of some phonemic awareness and phonics type of support reading fluency. That went from July 5th to July 22nd. We had five students that spanned grade six through eight attend. Um, What's nice for us in central office, it's just so nice to see children here and students here during the summer months, and it kind of helps to keep you focused on, you know, what the mission is and what we're doing throughout the school year. Uh, in addition to having our students here in various uh, programs, we spend an awful lot of time, our teachers spend an awful lot of time working on curriculum development. So some of the areas that the teachers worked on at the K-5 level, and these are just some examples of the multitude of opportunities teachers had to get together to work on, on curriculum this summer. We continued the K-5 ELA and math curriculum alignment module extensions and also developed common assessments that will be used in the K-5 ELA and math to um, kind of uni uniformly see how our students do on each of the modules and the work that's being implemented in the individual classrooms. We had literacy-based ba um, uh, project-based learning units across grade level in the four and five grade level at Crom Pond. There was a STEAM unit de uh, developed. There was a rubric development in certain areas. Differentiation for ENL teachers was also an area that was worked on. There was a nursery rhyme unit at our kindergarten level from an Engage New York, and with that, we created uh, QR codes for books so that if the student can scan the QR code, the book will, the nursery rhyme book will read to the students. Um, there, we did a grammar pacing guides. Student data analysis took place. Guided reading for deep comprehension protocols was uh, was uh, an area of focus as well. And as typical for every year, the gen ed and special ed teachers who work in the integrated co-teaching setting um, work on some collaboration and planning for the upcoming student development. For grades six through 12, some examples of some of the work that went on this summer was curriculum articulation in social studies, science, math, English, and world language, program development as we spoke to earlier with the STEPS A curriculum, uh, teaching ELL students in the general classrooms and some strategies that can be helpful to general ed teachers. Computer programming, robotics, and 3D printing experiences were developed. Tiered content area vocabulary in various subjects were put in place. The developing small group instruction within the larger class was something that was uh, looked at for some of our high school teachers wanted an opportunity to see how can we break down and differentiate our learning for um, some of our groups at the different content areas. There was the content shift in global history and how to address that. And again, the collaboration between the general ed and special ed teachers took place. 
that was just some samples of a lot of the work that happens in the summer and it's really a process where again we're looking at the goals and curriculum and our principals are working with teachers to develop what's the best use of our time in the summer and the curriculum hours that we have available and what can we accomplish. Moving into this 16-17 school year we're going to start off on uh, the 31st with the staff development day and we'll be talking about responding to student needs in the changing suburbs. There'll be a two-hour workshop for every one of our um, employees that will take place and really talk to how do we meet the needs of the diverse uh, the diverse populations that we may start to see now or have seen in the last recent years. Some other opportunities that will take place on that day will be building specific and department and grade specific, but some of them will, will include continued curriculum articulation and alignment, an analysis of student data, social emotional behavior supports and interventions, and continued integration of Google Chromebooks and the Google Cla uh, Classroom platform. So all of that work is just helping us to look forward to the 16-17 school year and the work that needs to be done. Thank you. Thank Any you. questions? Thank you. Go ahead, Mike has a question. Mm -hmm. Lisa, <coughs> excuse me, the um, six through eight reading support program mm -hmm. with uh, only five students in mm -hmm. attendance, is that because we're doing an amazing job uh, in the <laughs> during the school year or is there uh, not a lot of enrollment there? I think it's a combination of both. I think that we would have liked to see closer to 15 students but when we put the um, invite out to the students that we've really targeted needed some, you know, this is not someone who just needs some reading comprehension help. These are really <coughs> our reading fluency and the students that are still struggling with reading fluency, which then impacts their comprehension. So it's a very Wilson-based uh, program. So there were 15 about students that probably five on each grade level that we would have liked to see, six, seven, and eight. Um, but it, whether it's vacation schedules, camp schedules, parents are not always able to make the student available. So are we thinking of a game plan on how we can maybe engage those students in the future or maybe getting out ahead of time with dates? Like what I would think help? that uh, a lot of times we're waiting um, to see how our students do at the end of the school year with our final um, progress monitoring, benchmark monitoring, and that's how we kind of develop our list and prioritize our list. But it would make sense to get out ahead of it earlier for next year if we're going to run this again. Again, it's certain grade levels we're not going to see this need, but it just happens to be a cluster of students that um, we've seen in the last few years. This is the second year we've run that program in the summer last year. I believe we had more students participate last school year. A pretty, uh, we have a pretty phenomenal reading program here, and thanks to the board, uh, we have reading specialists from, as you know, the primary schools through the intermediate grades, middle school, and even into the high school. Uh, so I, I think, tongue in cheek, uh, I was saying it's because we do a phenomenal job. When in, in fact, some of it is schedule related. There's no doubt, but there is a phenomenal amount of work that goes into monitoring those students. Um, and really uh, working very carefully and closely with them on those skills that they're lacking in. And that goes on really every grade. I, I think we, we really do an excellent job uh, with the reading program. And our reading specialists are sensational. Yeah, I agree. I mean, if, you know, five or so mm -hmm. students at each grade level that would you know benefit from additional mm -hmm. help is a pretty darn good ratio. Right. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, with the time we choose to run it, it's, yep. You know, they may have only known mm -hmm. a week or two before that that right. their their that's student true. you know could have been involved in this. So they they probably were st starting to be notified by the second week in June, by the end of mid June. So it's not a lot of time yeah. for them to plan their right summer schedule. The, you know, mm -hmm. July fifth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's mm -hmm. something we should try to tackle and yeah. maybe either notify them earlier or move the camp towards the end of the summer mm -hmm. so that mm -hmm. they have more of an opportunity to rearrange scheduling. You know, there's this confined, the confines in terms of, um, you know, we like to, our longest program is the extended school year. It runs for six weeks. During that six weeks is when we have a nurse in the building. So it has to be kind of within that right after the 4th of July through the middle of August or else we won't have the appropriate medical support if necessary. So that's kind of what, what cages us into that end by mid-August time. Um, can I have a point of order? Can we go skip down to personnel? Do you guys mind? Yeah. I know. Don't give me one. No. 
All right. I just actually want to just, I want to just pr bring one up to the front and then we'll just do all of them. Um, upon recommendation of the superintendent, a motion the following be approved. We have um, a new appointee sitting in the in this audience. I just want to bring her up, and that's Pamela DeLuca, who's going to be an ENL teacher at Brookside. So, can I have a motion and a second. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Go ahead, bro. So, uh, welcome. Who, who did you bring along with you? Mom and Dad. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Hi, Mr. and Mrs. DeLuca. Mm -hmm. So we are so happy to have Pam, and you are going to be very, very happy here. We have sensational principal at Brookside, Mrs. Ameling. You'll love her, and uh, you'll have a partner there, which is interesting, because most often, uh, and uh, there, there aren't two ENL teachers in the same building, but Colleen Maraglia is there, and she's absolutely lovely. Uh, we have great kids here, wonderful parents, um, a good administration who's very interested in their teachers, and we know you're going to be very, very happy. And uh, we know that you're going to do a lot for our ENL students. We've changed this name more e times. E so <laughs> it, it e used to be, in the very old days, it was ESL. ESL. And you're, you're too young, you're shaking your head like you know that, <laughs> but you couldn't possibly know that. Uh, and then we had ELL, and now ENL. Mm -hmm. So English as a new language. And, um, <laughs> I, I know that you'll do great work for us. So usually we're very entertaining. So you'll, you'll have to come back at another time when the children are here. Uh, this is just a catch up as we start the new school year. Uh, so um, welcome and um, you'll have an opportunity. There's, there's actually 17 new teachers that are going to be starting in, no, I'm sorry, two new administrators and 15 new teachers. Three new administrators and 14 <laughs> new teachers. It's, it's 17 people, three new administrators. Yeah, 14 <laughs> new teachers. And we'll see you all on the 29th, and then you'll meet all the people that are starting with you. So you'll have a cohort of people that, um, even though they won't be in the same building as you necessarily, uh, they'll certainly be going through uh, the tenure process and as you continue through retirement at Yorktown schools. Um, you'll, you'll get to know them very well. And then in September, you'll be brought back with your principal and, and everybody new will be introduced to the community on TV. But if you want to come up and say a few words now, you're welcome to. But no pressure, no, no pressure. pressure. Well, she'll be here at Convocation on Tuesday, she'll too. Be, we'll see her on Convocation Day and yes. with new teacher orientation yes. on Monday. Yeah, but Convocation's everybody. There. Convocation is everybody. You'll be overwhelmed. <laughs> get here early. Yes. Get a good seat. <laughs> so, we, so we welcome you. Yeah. And thank you, Mr. and Mrs. DeLuca, for coming and for being patient. We were late coming out. We never are. <laughs> Every meeting we are. <laughs> and, uh, but we were not as entertaining as we usually are. So we invite you we're to come back to be again. Today. Congratulations. Everybody's on their best behavior because yeah, we wanted to make an impression on Pam. <laughs> 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 so you can leave now. <laughs> we'll see you on Monday. Thank You're welcome. You. Good night. Like Oh, so All right, we're going to just finish up with personnel. So can we have a motion to appoint the rest of the certified personnel? We have part-time temporary appointments, regular substitute appointments, seasonal substitute, extended school year, part-time AI, academic intervention teachers, amendment for appointments, stipends, other compensation, leaves of absence, volunteers, coaches, resignations, and we have classified personnel. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, personnel is done. I can go back up. You were up to board reports, right? We're going to start yep. with audit. Tom? Sure. We have ongoing activities for both external and internal audit. The external auditors have done their field work, and the audit committee will meet with them in September, get a sort of an update on where things are and a draft report, and uh, then we'll be ready for the board presentation in October. And for the internal auditors, the audit committee met uh, a little over a month ago, and we agreed on, um, well, they did their, their general risk assessment, and we agreed on the payroll as an area to focus on going forward for the next internal audit. Terrific. Okay. The external audit, that has to be approved by when? It's usually October, right? October. So yeah. can we just make sure that we get that on? Because yes. poor Ray always gets kind of yeah. pushed aside and get that on an agenda, so that well, has I'll it work already with you on there. <laughs> Thank you. Um, fiscal advisory. <coughs> 
So um, under fiscal advisory committee, one of the things we need to discuss as a board is how we'd like to handle capital projects going forward. Uh, Tom and Ralph in their uh, goals alluded to the fact that we have um, wrapped up or are in the process of wrapping up our bond projects. Um, but as everyone knows, with the campus the size that we have, there's cons constant work that needs to be done. Um, one of the things that we need to discuss is how do we go about funding some of those projects in the future. Um, we have some choices. We could simply use money from our reserve, you know, existing reserves. Uh, we could set up uh, something like a capital reserve fund, which is uh, one of the, I think, eight different reserves that the district is allowed to maintain. Um, but somehow, uh, you know, we believe that it's prudent for the board to consider setting aside money rather than having to potentially go out for another bond, uh, borrow money, incur the interest costs. Mm -hmm. um, we've used this type of approach on a couple of other occasions with somewhat smaller projects. One of them was um, the capital improvements that BOCES required all of the districts to contribute to. For those of you that were here and remember, uh, we were able to fund that out of uh, some of our existing reserves over the last three years without having to expend any um, borrowing uh, cost. Uh, we've also done it with smaller projects. I think we used uh, funds to handle things like the tennis courts and some other projects. So um, it's kind of a two-step process. One is we're trying to identify what some of the next capital projects might be. Um, but then we also have to figure out how we want to fund those. So mm -hmm. that's really the next steps of the process. So how do you want to move forward? You tell me, <laughs> Madam President. <laughs> <laughs> no, we have a board. It ain't my choice. Um, well, I know that Audit has been involved with fiscal advisory in at least having discussions about what we can and can't do. Mm -hmm. Should we put it on as a discussion item to talk about what our options are, you know, and discuss it publicly? Um, uh, to me, there's two parts, right? The first part is, and we'll get some clarity on this Thursday, right? We have a meeting scheduled to discuss some of the capital, some of the capital ideas. projects and ideas that are going forward. So the first part would be what are some of the things that we know are coming or we'd like to see happen. Um, and then the discussion about how do we want to fund it, or right. you know, how do we want to pay for those things. So, um, yeah, I think putting it on maybe as an agenda item after we've had the, the discussion about what some of the projects might be would be a little more sensible. We'd have a better idea and understanding of what some of the costs I think might there's, be. There's two different, you have the, the committee that's talking about some, but Dennis for Boys also has the, um, the five year facilities plan that we're required to do every year too. So there's there's two avenues, and oh, he's got his own list too, because I make him write stuff down all the time. So there's a, an awful long list of items in the district mm -hmm. that need attention at some point. So I don't know if we want to call that into one item, if we want to look at it as different pockets, how we want to talk about it. It's up to, it's up to the board. I mean, however they want to discuss it. I think we should create a, a discussion agenda item. I, I like Mike's idea of having some idea of you know what the capital projects might look like, and um, I, I oh as a general you know concept, I like the idea of setting aside some money for a rainy day, so to speak, and not waiting until you know time hard times come. So uh, I think it'd be a good discussion item for a future board meeting. Okay. For those of you that were around pre two thousand six. Uh, you you would remember the condition of the facilities, and they were pretty, uh, you know, in in a state of real, I would say, disrepair. Uh, we have done some remarkable work over these ten years, and um, and I'm really so proud of the facilities and the way they look. But again, as Mike identified and as Tom is confirming, uh, this is a huge campus. And I think getting ahead, we, we've always, over these 10 years, we've really always tried to be ahead of what the expectation, what was coming up, what's expected of us. We were always on the cutting edge of, we should do this, we should look at this. Tom, with security, before everybody was talking about security, we were already all over that. Um, and, and I think if we have that opportunity to establish, as you say, save some of our own funding to put aside, for that time that we want to uh, engage in a project.
just in the savings alone from going out and bonding, yeah. uh, Tom will tell you that um, much of it, $37 million, certainly in interest costs, were close to $6 million or more than $6 million. Well, let's say $6 million. So to avoid that is something phenomenal. We, and we have a, an example of it when uh, BOCES took over their renovations of their properties. And as a component district, we were told that we would owe, uh, our contribution to that would be about $1.2 million. Um, our saving that money in advance prevented mm -hmm. us from having to bond, prevented us from having to pay interest. Mm -hmm. We paid our debt and that was it. So I, I really like what you're saying. It makes so much sense to me and to the future of, yeah. um, of our property. Yeah. This, is, this is beautiful. Uh, it's a unique opportunity because in the past, as you've said, we were behind. We had to invest significant amounts that we had to borrow. Now we're in a position where we can stay ahead of the game, do the maintenance that's needed, take care of the facilities, but in smaller chunks, which we don't need to go out and take a bond out for. Right, and some of that we've been doing all along, right? We've had line items in our agendas for the last several years regarding uh, maintenance and uh, some capital projects. Uh, this would be for things that are maybe of, of a bigger scope. Yeah. Um, you know, that wouldn't be so easy to just incorporate into our existing structure. So yeah. um, I think it makes sense to have a, an agenda item going forward where we discuss what the... Our next board so. meeting isn't towards till the end towards the end of September, right? About like the twenty second. September twelfth. And then twenty sixth. Twenty sixth. Okay. I will not be here on the twelfth if that influences your agenda at all. Um, well, we'll put it on. Which is the work session? The twelfth, right? Put on 12th or 22nd. Discussion. Let's see where we get after Thursday, and then we can start to plan. But you're right; it's something we need to discuss and and get input on to to figure out the best ways to move forward. Yes, because if we choose to go the capital reserve fund route, there is a lengthy process that we'll have to go through in order to um, s establish it and get approval for it. So, okay. the the sooner we get moving on it, the better. Okay. All right, so we'll, right. we'll plan to discuss it again in September after just the committees have met and Great. have some recommendations and we have some ideas where we're moving. Okay. Wonderful. All right, we're up to policy. Okay, um, now that Karen's no longer with us, we had to reorganize the committee a little bit. So the committee now consists of me, Jackie, and Christine. And uh, we met earlier this month uh, to talk a little bit about where we're headed with uh, the policy review. Uh, and we're going to continue uh, with the review calendar, uh, looking at uh, going ba basically in date order and looking at any mandatory or mandated uh, policies first and then moving ahead with that. The process uh, that we'd be using would be uh, spearheaded by Yvette, our district clerk, and um, she would ensure that all of the policies would be seen by all of the needed parties and would go through, you know, uh, department heads, Dr. Napolitano, our legal counsel, back to the committee and ultimately to the Board of Education for adoption or to answer any questions. Uh, we talked about how many policies we wanted reviewed per month and uh, we set a goal of having 10 policies reviewed per month. And um, we said that we were going to be meeting monthly, so we'll be meeting again in September and then we'll move on from there. Yvette has um, done a phenomenal job over the summer. She took her entire policy manual, she now has it on a Google Sheet with links to every policy which he uploaded into Google Docs. So it's all an automated po uh, process now. And you know, everybody can share. She can share the spreadsheet so people know where they're going. They can link mm -hmm. to it. She's done a really great. And she's found a lot of holes. What we said we had, mm -hmm. we didn't have. And so it's, she's done a really good job. On it, and that's going to be very helpful. But just a warning, you're going to see policy on every meeting going forward. So just so you know, <laughs> we're getting through this one now, right? <laughs> yes, we're moving quickly. <laughs> All right. Uh, um, okay, and then steering. Yes, as, as Ralph has said, this is we're winding down, hopefully. Uh, we are still working really hard to get everything done. We're, we're cutting it close this year. Sorry, guys. but. Um, the middle school canopy is just waiting for the metal to come for the new marquee, which would be in this week. The high school, they still have to put the uh, stucco on and the lights and uh, 
they have to do a lot, but they say they're going to be ready for Monday. The crown pond is still inching along. <laughs> they're promising it'll be done by Friday. Um, signage may not be complete before um, opening day. They'll have, at least they've promised they'll have the foundations in place, but they may not have the signs and the, the stone up. Um, I know the signs are ordered. They are due in. I know that the digital sign should be already here. Um, so hopefully they will be up. It will be really nice because we will have a beautiful digital, two-sided digital sign up on the campus. So that will be beautiful. Um, so we are just hoping. They, they've worked very, very hard, so mm -hmm. yeah. they really have worked hard. That, that ABA classroom in um, Crown Pond is beautiful. Is well, that's work outside. That was steering committee. The work that Dennis's guys have done yeah. on the side, that you can speak to. That's yeah. another amazing No, that was, so I mean, yeah. there were a combination of two yeah. kinds of, you know, there was, of course, the bond projects. There were capital fund projects that we, we set aside money for. But I mean, all the, the, yeah. a lot of work was going on and it's remarkable. And Dennis's guys have reworked all of the, uh, well, up the up the modulars to be able to move PPS over. He's a street working admin. He's, these guys are working hard too. Yep. And we were able to walk, just so you know, we were able to walk through the high school and the middle school today. And his guys, again, have done a great, great job there too. So we thank well, them looks for great. that. Thank you, Dennis. Yep. All right. We go to board action items. Uh, treasurer's report: a motion to approve the revisions to the treasurer's report, report for July 2016. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Extra classroom activity fund: a motion to accept the extra classroom activity fund reports for, for July 2016. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Claims audit report. A uh, motion to accept the claims audit report for July 2016, July 1st, 2016 to July 31st, 2016. So moved. So moved. Discussion. Um, there were some recommendations within that claims audit report. Are we going to address his recommendations? Yes, of course. Um, some of them we do in, in, some of them have checks and balances we need to talk to him about when he talks about um, using some kind of a rolling uh, account of open purchase orders. Our system on the front end won't allow purchase orders to go over the amounts in a particular code. So some of them, we have to meet with them, but yes, in general, we'll adopt those things that are uh, not currently being uh, done within the process. Okay, and then I have a question, and that is under the exceptions. When there's a list of, ex well, a number of exceptions, but we never get a list, how do we know that those exceptions have been addressed? Uh, the checks can't go out unless those issues have been addressed. So they get returned to the claims auditor so that he can see that those items that were accepted previously have been accomplished. Okay. Are you happy with this new process? I am. <laughs> yeah, the, the only problem we had with him is that, and it can be worked with, is that he's very busy around tax season. So, um, but we'll work around that. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm excited about the new reports. I can Makes really Makes a big them. difference. Yeah, really <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Tom, for getting that done. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? We did appointments, so we are up to business office. Okay, um, a motion to extend the contract with Aramark for food service management effective July 1st, 2000, and I think these dates are wrong. Is it effective July 1st, 2016 to June 30th, 2017, Yvette? Yes. That's what it should, that's so what the it contract, be. it's wrong? No, the contract is contract correct. Is right. motion it's labeled right. correctly, it's just not in the motion. Okay, correctly. the motion's incorrect, yeah. so can change that, all right? So moved. Second, Second discussion. Go ahead. So this, I apologize if I missed a previous discussion. We're extending the contract, no bidding or anything like that. Have we? We can extend the contract for a period of five years at the okay. uh, consumer price index increase, yeah. which is nine tenths of one percent, and that's okay. what we're choosing to do. And how long has the contract been in place? One year. One year. So we're extending it for the second year. One more year. Yeah. Okay. And we increased um, lunch prices. What? A nickel? Um, no, more no, more towards a, a dime, a dime. 15 cents in some cases. Okay. okay. Um, a motion to appoint Blue Dragon Connection LLC as the district's sole vendor Do to make. Do we have to vote on oh, that? Oh, I'm sorry. 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 All those in favor? Aye. 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 Yes, it happens to yes, question. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Now, okay, no, it's my fault. A motion to appoint Blue Dragon Connection LLC as the district's sole vendor to maintain and service all security equipment and systems throughout the district for the 1617 school year beginning September 22nd, 2016, ending September 27, 2017, for an annual cost of 
$9,340. So moved. Second. Second discussion. Go ahead. Is this something new, Tom? I don't recall this. No, this, this goes back um, uh, a period of years since we've instituted the security system with the card swipes. Right. Blue Dragon was uh, the, the contractor that installed all of our security cameras. Okay. Uh, and then when we installed the security system, the card swipe system, there we went through two or three different vendors, Jackie, to mm -hmm. try to integrate the systems, and the only people who could do it was Blue Dragon. Okay. So we so used them to, to the maintain the all okay. of our security Got apparatus. It. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> District-wide water testing resolved upon recommendation of the superintendent of schools. The Board of Education approves the agreement for the Putnam Northern Westchester Bosey's Regional Services Safety Services COSER to perform district-wide water testing services in the amount of $11,450.55 with contingency costs. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Best Web. Uh, resolved upon recommendation of the superintendent, the Board of Education approves the contract with Best Web Corporation to upgrade the district's inter-building fiber optic LAN to standardized single-mode fiber optic network and includes the installation of the new BAT6, BAT6 Ethernet cables and wireless access. Um, this is part of the smart school bonds. Yep. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Health and welfare. Uh, motion to approve the contract for health and welfare services provided to resident pupils attending non-public schools in other districts. This is for New Rochelle. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Manpower resolved upon recommendation of the superintendent of schools. The Board of Education authorizes the board, president of the Board of Education to sign the agreement with Manpower. A copy of this contract should be incorporated by reference of the minutes of this meeting. So moved. Second. Discussion. I just want everybody to know this is for the security people. It is. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Budget transfers. A motion to approve the following budget transfers for the 16 17 school year. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? French Hill Lease. A motion to approve the attached amendments for the following rental contracts for French Hill um, School. We have Soaring Eagle, Lori Kelleher, Northern Westchester School of Music, Energy Improvement. Alliance for Safe Kids, Oxygen Volleyball, Home and Said Senior Care, and Yorktown CMA. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Tom, thank you for all starting them all at the same time. <laughs> 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 Much easier. Um, curriculum and instruction resolved upon recommendation of the superintendent. The Board of Education approves a five year Yorktown Central School District annual professional development plan as mandated by the commissioner's regulations. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Um, a resolution will authorize the execution of the APPR implementation certification form. So moved. Second. Second. Thank you. All those in fi favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Um, motion to approve the contract between the Yorktown Central School District and Strategies for the Whole Child Education and Community School Partners LLC for professional development training sessions, survey design, and analysis. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? PIPs. A motion to approve the following uh, yes, PIPs. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Professional development. No, wait, where am I? EDOC Arena. I went up. A uh, motion to approve the EDOC Arena contract for the 2016 17 school year. So, so moved. moved. Second. Discussion, Lisa, this is our data services, correct? This is our, uh, it's a learning management system. It holds all our data related to student and staff evaluation. Correct, thank you. Yes. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Um, student assistance resolved upon recommendation of the, of the <laughs> it's, this is wrong, recommendation of the superintendent, the Board of Education hereby, wait a minute. This is not right, it can't be reading this. It's not a no, rec it's upon recommendation first. of the Board of Ed. The Board of Ed hereby authorizes the superintendent of schools to execute and no, I have to sign it. This isn't written right. I don't, I'm not sure and, uh, about the, uh, upon the resolution. It has to be, it has to be the other way. It has a, a recommendation of the superintendent hereby authorizes to the board. The to the board. It authorizes board the board president to execute an amendment with uh, an agreement with student assistance services for comprehensive education, professional and intervention services in an amount not to see, hmm? exceed $69,940. Right? It yes, can't that's be. it. Yeah. And it's, the other one and is reversed as well. Okay. Yeah. So what do we do? Yes. You're going to fix the way those motions read? Yes. Thank you. 
<laughs> Are so we correct? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm researching it as we speak, so I don't know this. <laughs> But it has to say revolve. Okay. Rever yeah, just reverse, reverse it. Okay. So can I have a motion? And we're reversing it. So she's going to put it in properly. Superintendent. Board of Education. Yes. So, so moved. moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And you know, Students Assistance Service, we, we maintain that contract with them over the years. Correct. That's and they actually sent us an end, a very nice end of the year report mm -hmm. this year, which was mm -hmm. really helpful. Um, and then we have one for the middle school upon recommendation of superintendent. I uh, authorize the Board of Education. Board of Education authorizes the President of the Board to execute an agreement with Student Assistance Services for comprehensive services at the middle school, not to exceed thirty-seven thousand five hundred dollars. So, so moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Sorry, I didn't see that before either. Special Ed. Be it resolved that the Yorktown Central School District Board of Education hereby authorizes its law firm Shaw, Pearlson, May, and Lambert LLP to file an appeal to the New York State. Office of State Review in the matter of VESID -E case number 94920. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Um, okay. We have a motion to approve committee members of the CSE and the CPSE for the 2016 17 school year. These are just some additions. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I have individual contracts. A motion to approve the following contracts for the 16-17 school years. Dr. Robert Milch, Melissa Shet Shelter Trevar, Dr. Antonio Blanco, and Robin Corpolongo. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Placements. A motion to approve the following contracts for out-of-district placements for the 16-17 school year to the Pelham Union Free, Free School District for one student and for the Carafin School for placement of one student. So moved. Second. All those approved uh, in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, a motion to arrange the following special ed placements for August 22nd, 2016. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Gifts, grants, and donations. A motion to accept with gratitude the following gifts, grants, and donations from Crompond, $165 from the Crompond PTA applicable to the class trip taken on the Klondike for the 15-16 school year. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We are up Aye. to board comments. Christine? I'm good, thank you. Mike? I think I'm good. Freshman? I'm good. Welcome. Tom? Good to go. Cheryl? I just wanted to say that it's exciting to start uh, actually my official first year <laughs> here and um, walking through the schools today just they look fabulous so thank you to uh, Dennis and his staff they really uh, look wonderful yes Dennis right. left you with yes the, the buildings did work wonderful everybody did great work and we thank you guys for all the hard work you've done all summer because you've been working with boxes and tiptoeing over all kinds of stuff <laughs> and everybody's everybody puts up with a lot in the summers and we appreciate everything they do. So thank you, Ralph Florence. How about the Lisa, not Florence. Uh, Ralph and uh, Lisa, Tom, I'm honored that was to be quick. mistaken. For, I know. We're, we're just Anything? happy to be back okay. and excited about starting the new school year. We're looking forward to seeing uh, all of the staff on uh, the 30th and the students on the 1st. Ooh. It's really exciting. It's going to be exciting. You're right. We're up to public comment. Anybody in the public wishing to speak? All right, can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Good night, everybody. Thank Aye. you. Aye.